Hey guys, welcome to a very quick quickie. A guy sent me this video where Hugo, this guy here, was doing an uh, edge extension in Nuke to fix the Z depth pass. And uh, this guy asked me how to do this in Fusion. So, uh, by the way, this is a very interesting video, I recommend it. Uh, let's jump right into Fusion, get rid of my recording software. And what I have here is a green screen footage from the uh, open source movie Tears of Steel. And I already did the key here using Delta Key, which, by the way, is very awesome. Uh, but this is not a tutorial on keying, but on the edge extension. So I want to show you that uh, since Fusion 9, we actually have two ways of doing the edge extension. Now, the classic way of doing the edge extension is by using the alpha divide technique and if you watch my alpha divide video then you know that when doing the alpha divide what happens is if this is a pixel value of one and here of zero the anti-aliasing basically goes down to zero right you have a pixel the solid pixel of one and then gradually it becomes more and more zero transparent and that is what makes your anti-aliasing. Now when doing the alpha divide, what happens is basically that all values between 1.0 and 0 0.1, including 0 0.1, will be raised to 1. And therefore, the anti-aliasing disappears. And you have all pixels being solid. Now that is basically what happens when I use a Boolean tool that is set to divide. Uh, the alpha channel to all channels and what happens is this now if I zoom in you can see that our anti-aliasing disappeared toggle on and off so this is what happens with the anti-aliasing right and now we can utilize this to create an extended edge and for that we first need to bring this range of pixels further away like this and we do that using the blur now the blur is already set to 4.7 and if i hook this in between here what happens is the edges get extended and that is because after the blur the divide will do this again so all pixels become full solid and what I can do now is with the blur, if I would change the value, you can see that I can extend the edge. Now, don't care about what happens here. This is, this is not important. With this edge extension method, all we need is an extended edge. Everything that happens in here doesn't matter because we won't see it later anyway. So once you have this, what you want to do is you need the original alpha let me use a bitmap mask here so basically here i get the original alpha and after this i use a matte control and i bring this into the foreground and let me invert the mask oh actually i can do this in the matte control here in matte combine i say combine alpha and post multiply now basically we, we just return the effect but that's not what we want. We want to keep the edge. So we can simply invert, invert matte, and you will be left with the edge, with the extended edge. Now that's the classic way of doing the edge extension. Uh, let me show you what we can do since Fusion 9. Now, the cool thing is that the answer lies in this clean plate node. So for example, if you have your keyed footage, for instance, all you have to do is bring in a background with the same resolution and I make this green again and now hook this on top of that. Here I have a few issues and what I want to do now is I use another clean plate node and this time I don't pick the, the green screen, I pick what's in here and then I bring this all the way down as far as possible and now I can use those sliders here erode and grow edge 
to do the edge extension. And actually this gives even a nicer result than the other method I showed. You can see it really extends it very nicely. Now there were a few issues here. This is just because uh, I just did a very quick slab compass just for this demonstration. Uh, yeah, but these are basically the two methods that, can, that you can utilize to do your edge extension. And just for the fun of it, I'll just take the key that I made here and I'm gonna put this on a background here. And let's do a quick composite. I take the defocus and I'm gonna put the background out of focus very quickly. Something like this maybe. And I'm gonna adjust the colors because they don't match at the moment. So the foreground is very saturated and I just wanna quickly match this. So I bring up the saturation and maybe, ah, doesn't matter. And what I do after that, now I'm in linear space here and what I do now is I put another gamut in and I just bring this back to sRGB and now I can deactivate, can deactivate the gamut here and I'm gonna use another color corrector and I bring in a magic LUT and I'm gonna load in a magic LUT. I'm gonna load this one here and, and right off the bat this looks a little bit strange because this LUT wasn't made for this kind of image and if that image is not the same and if it has completely different colors then of course you will get strange results. Okay so the first thing I want to do is I want to bring in a color curve and I want to do something very dangerous here because Fusion 9 crashes a lot when I use when I do this. So I want to clip I want to clip the highs because otherwise I get um, some problems here. And now this lot was made for log footage. And I like to use it I can't explain why now, but um, what I want to do now is with this, with this color corrector, I want to basically bring down the saturation. You can see because the colors are brought back with this LUT, with this uh, yeah lookup table. So I bring down the saturation and maybe reduce the contrast because this was made for log, so it will add contrast. Do something like this. And you could always change the color, the hue a little bit something like this contrast a little bit here and I have a little background that I've created in secret that was not this one <laughs> it was this one here I just quickly merge this on top and do a quick screen and we'll look up table back here just a little bit uh, very cheesy now uh, this is very quick and dirty here but doesn't look too shabby. Let's make this a little bigger for you. By the way, the reason why recently I put uh, this um, control panel on the left is because I'm a southpaw and for many years I was working with the, this panel on the right side and just recently, I mean since Fusion 9 allows us to customize the user interface, <laughs> just recently I realized, hey, why don't I put this on the left? <laughs> because as for the for the south pole, it's much better on the left side, you know. It's just a quick tip, but I think most of you are right-handed anyway. Yeah, and then usually uh, I would put a grain, and I see some people slapping the grain just on like this. But if you watch uh, a real footage with grain on it, you will realize you will notice that the grain is much stronger in the dark areas and uh, not so strong or almost not visible in the bright areas. So I will just take a luminance mask here and sort of mask the grain out here. So you can see here we have grain. Wait, maybe I have to do I have to invert? Yes. So I inverted this and of course now I'm gonna adjust the strength very subtle doesn't have to be too strong but you see now we have the grain more in the dark areas and here in the bright we don't have anything so um, depends how strong you want to have it okay that was a quick uh, quickie for demonstrating how to extend the edges with a quick bonus on a quick compositing using the Delta here and uh, I will do more compositing 
tutorials using the Delta Cure. Uh, but before I do that, I want to dive into it a little bit more and experiment with it a little bit more before I, before I pretend that I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> no. Anyway, my name is Vito. I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you're doing. Hey.